this is Mr. Aiden. I'm going to be uh, detailing a Bernoulli's principle problem. Uh, this is, comes out of the 2009 AP exam. This is where we have an underground pipe that's carrying water with a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed to a fountain at ground, ground level. How do we know it's a Bernoulli's principle problem? Well, we see pipes flowing through here. We see a fountain. Any one of these fountain problems or like a like a water tower with a hole in it or something like that is going to be a Bernoulli's principle problem. Now the big thing we're going to want to do in every Bernoulli's principle problem is to label our diagram. They tell us something about um, our height. Our height at point A is of course zero meters. We're going to make this our frame of reference. And what do we know about the height at point B? The height is 0.5 meters. Okay. What do we know about point A is we know the cross-sectional area of point A which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. Now, they didn't give me radius. If they would have given me radius, I would have had to do pi r squared because of the circular pipe. But they already gave me cross-sectional area. It's very nice. They also gave me the cross-sectional area at point B, which was 0.5 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. Okay. Again, if they would have given me the radius, I would have had to do pi r squared. Now, the first thing. Well, we also know something else about point B. We know the velocity at point B, which is 8.2 meters per second. If you see, there is one glaring difference between point A and point B is they haven't given me the velocity at point A. And that's something that I'm going to try to find. And so, but before we do that, we're going to try to find the volume rate of flow. The volume rate of flow. What do we know about the volume rate of flow? It is the volume divided by the seconds, the time. Okay, it's also equal to a1 times v1. That's our volume rate of flow. Now they didn't give me my volume, they didn't give me my time, but they did give me my area and velocity at a certain point. They gave me that point B. What do we know about my area at point B? My area is 0.5 times 10 to the negative fourth meter squared. What do they tell me about the velocity? The velocity is 8.2 meters per second. And I'll show you how we're going to plug this in the calculator. We're going to take 0.5 times 10 to the negative 4. And we're going to just going to multiply by 8.2. And what are we going to end up getting is a volume rate of flow of 4.1 times 10 to the negative 4th. And that is in units of meters cubed per second. That is my volume rate of flow. The next thing we're going to find is my velocity at point A. And how are we going to find that is we're going to go to my continuity equation. My A1V1 equals A2V2. And I already know my A1V1 at point B is 4.1 times 10 to the negative 4. That is my volume rate of flow. And that never changes from point A to point B. Now what did change from point A to point B is my area. My area ends up being 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 meter squared, which means I can find my velocity. And how can I find my velocity? All I'm going to have to do algebraically is divide by 1 times 10 to the negative 4. And I end up getting a velocity of 4.1 meters per second. It's inversely proportional. As the radius and the area went up, the velocity went down to 4.1. And it's going to be very important for me to label my diagram as you'll see for the next part, which is the Bernoulli's principal part of this problem. The last part of this problem is going to be pretty easy if you have everything diagrammed correctly. And this part of this problem is going to be doing my Bernoulli's principal problem. They're going to ask me for my absolute pressure at point A. And so that's going to take me to that Bernoulli's principal equation. Pressure plus rho gh plus one half rho v squared equals pressure plus rho gh plus one half rho v squared. And what are we going to try to find? First we have to label one side of our equation at point, at point A, one side of our equation at point B, and that way we keep everything straight. And if we have our diagram labeled, we know what we're going to put in whatever place. We're trying to find this pressure right here at point A. I'm going to try to find my absolute pressure, and I'll talk about that in a second, but that's what I'm going to try and find. Now, take a look at the height at point A. There is absolutely zero height, so he is zero. 
I have one half, my density of water is a thousand, and my velocity, I labeled my diagram very appropriately 4.1 squared. Now since I'm trying to find absolute pressure, this pressure right here is going to be 1 times 10 to the fifth, the absolute atmospheric pressure. If I'm just trying to find gauge pressure, I'm not going to put anything in this place. I'll put the, leave that at zero. Now if you see, I do have a rho GH. I have a 1,000 times 9.8 times my height of 0.5. And at the end, I have a 1 half rho V squared, 1 half times 1,000 times my velocity of 8.2 squared. And now this ends up being just an addition and subtraction problem is all it is. And so as what we're going to take a look is we're going to just add up all of our values. You can take a look at the first value is pressure plus, and I'll do it on the calculator, is 500. That was um, one half of a thousand times 4.1 squared. And I end up getting 8405 for this value right there. We still have 1 times 10 to the 5th, and we have 1,000 times 9.8 times a height of 0.5, and that gives me 4,900, 4,900, 4,900. And I have 1 half of 1,000, that's 500, I'm just going to simplify that real quick, times 8.2 squared. And that ends up being a pretty large number, 33620. And now again, just like I said, it is just an adding problem. It's 1 times 10 to the 5th plus my 4,900 plus my 33620 minus, because it's on the other side, 8405. And that ends up giving me an absolute pressure, an absolute pressure of 130115 pascals. And that completes our Bernoulli's principle problem. We have to be able to do these problems anytime we see a fountain or anything like that. Hope this problem helped, and I will talk to you later. See ya. Bye.